everyone. We are going to be talking about fertility. You know, a lot of young women or women who want to have kids are having problems with conceiving a, you know, a baby, a fertility. So I, I want to take this topic, you know, multiple times and, and talk about, you know, how acupuncture and some of these natural therapies can actually help you. And so for this, I have a very special guest today, Dr. Mary Wong. So hang on for one second while I get her. Okay, Dr. Mary is actually an expert on fertility and she's written a book, a best-selling author of Pathways to Pregnancy. And she has been, um, you know, teaching women for many, many years towards fertility, success to fertility. Welcome Dr. Mary, how are you? Hello, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Yes, absolutely. So I was just telling the viewers, just starting out, like, you know, a lot of women nowadays have problems with fertility, right? And and, and it's so difficult. So And, and you have specialized in fertility, and you've written a, a, a message, a book called Pathways to Pregnancy. So tell us a little bit about your journey. Oh, wow. That's great. Yes, thank you. So, um, okay, yeah, my journey, well, gosh, like I'm, I'm in the field of Chinese medicine and acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine, and being in the natural field, of course, when one tries to conceive, there's no thought, or any women really, for that matter, would expect to have any issues when trying to conceive. So I was 38, and at the time, I thought, gosh, it must be my husband's issue. And, um, and when we tested him, he had stellar sperm and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's something going on. And certainly we found that we had um, blocked fallopian tubes and they were fluid filled and it was irreversible. They actually took my tubes out. So coming from a, a natural medicine, it was, it was kind of, um, well, it was overwhelming at the time for sure, but I had to grapple with the fact that, gosh, you know, I am only human. I'm, I am a mere human and that sometimes there are things that you cannot control. So I surrendered and I integrated Eastern and Western medicine. So I also did um, IVF. And, um, you know, if you want to read more about that, certainly it'll be in my book, Pathways to Pregnancy. But I, it's about 15 women who have gone through challenges and through very different challenges, like whether it's PCOS, endometriosis, advanced maternal age, whatever that may be. And then it's transforming and overcoming their issues. And so it was really an eye opener. And because the journey allowed me to be with others who had their depths of despair, and then they evolve and they have the baby of their dreams, I wanted to help provide the hope because they were my source of hope. And I don't, I'm not sure if you're aware, but most women going through fertility, they don't tell anybody. So it's a very lonely journey and even more lonely in the COVID, in, in the pandemic. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So let's, let's just switch a little bit to acupuncture, right? And, and and I've read a lot of research on acupuncture. Acupuncture can help with the fertility. And you said yourself, you went to IVF, right? And being a natural a doctor or a you know, doctor of natural medicine. So how can acupuncture help with fertility? You know, that's kind of really what we want to understand because a lot of couples even now, they go get the IVF done and they think that IVF is the only option for them. That's a really great question. So here's the deal. I mean, IVF, they work on a numbers game. They give you stimulation drugs typically, and they want to increase your number of eggs, your number of follicles. I'm not sure if it froze. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay. Okay. So um, you, I when, lost you in between, um, but it's okay. When you go to I, oh boy, you're, it's frozen. You can hear me so you, you'll have to tell me if i'm frozen okay okay so when when people do fertility like even if they're doing iui so insemination versus in vitro fertilization they're trying to increase the number of eggs well chinese medicine acupuncture can complement it because we're looking more at trying to help the quality and what i mean by that is one of the actions of acupuncture it helps to increase 
ATP, cellular energy. And the egg is the largest cell in the human body. So if we can increase cellular energy, there's a better chance for greater cellular um, cell division to help with quality and prevent chromosomal errors. What we know about acupuncture, it also helps to increase blood volume to the reproductive organs. And so that's important because with it, we bring in nutrients, we're bringing in oxygenation, we're helping to dispel, dis, um, discard any overflow of um, hormones and take away toxicity. And then simultaneously, we also know for the uterus, we want to help the quality of the uterus as well. So it can help with the uterine quality and lining. I call it like, let's juice up those eggs and the uterus, right? And then the other piece to that, what we know, acupuncture has been shown in research to help with that stress response. And, you know, we can't control what happens around us. We can't control the lining. That can be very stressful. But what we can do, and you know, looking at your own stress management strategies, we can maybe help mitigate the stress because if we help mitigate the stress response, then that might help to optimize your fertility as well. And so with acupuncture, we know that it helps to release endorphins, that calming feel-good hormone can help to in uh, um, upregulate the what we call the parasympathetic nervous system. So if you're like frazzled and anxious or depressed, we can help to mitigate that response. So, so helpful because if you're trying to conceive and all the energy is going to fight and flee from a stress response, there's not much going on in your reproductive organs because it's not necessary for survival. So we want to calm it down so that your hormones and your reproductive hormones, which is a state of hormones between the hypothalamus to pituitary, to your ovarian axis, will be more aligned so they just work better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, so now the acupuncture is done in conjunction with the IVF, or it can be just the acupuncture alone and you don't need IVF. I mean, there could be multiple scenarios here, but on a very high level. Yes, so that's a really great question too, because people will ask and say, when do I start acupuncture? And I'll say, start today. Because no matter where you're at, whether you are, you know, one day, someday going to try to conceive versus you're in the middle of an IVF, it's never too late. It's never too late and it's never too early. Because, what you know, what we want to do is we can impact that area in the reproductive organs, right, as soon um, as it hits for this month. So we can impact it slightly. But if we know anything about the development of an egg from that germ cell to that ovulating egg that we have normally at a menstrual cycle. We know that the actual development is about 120 days. So the most ideal is we actually work from the ground up. So, you know, it's kind of like when you want to plant a seed in the soil. We want to make sure that we start feeding it yeah. right from before it germinates. We don't want to just feed it when it's about to um blossom right or for that and it blossom if we don't feel it wrong okay and then uh, so let's say uh, you know you've got so many women um with conceiving right successfully using agriculture and chinese medicine and herbal medicine so what is the duration of it? how much time do they have to come in to do the uh, treatment before they can you know get pregnant okay that's a great question as well so again you know, people are coming at different junctures. So in, in the middle of an IVF cycle, we can only help so much. We can only impact and imprint them so much. More ideally, like I said, if about 120 days in would be a, a, a good time frame. So basically three to four months is where it's most ideal. But again, it's never too late. So no matter where you are along your journey, it's okay to stop in the middle of an IVF cycle. Because unfortunately, that's actually what a lot of people do. So I'm not going to say unfortunate. It's it's they come and they come, right? Yeah. So, um, but and again, the time frame really, you know, it's the boosting of the ovaries and the uterus and the prodding the hypothalamus pituitary connection. We're we're working on to reset, rebalance that 
homeostasis so that the body and the soul is more welcoming to creating life. So it's not just the physiology. We also want to reset, you know, the mind, body, spirit connection. And that is like an overnight deal, right? There's some instances where it's magic, but for the most part in life, it, it does take time. So how many sessions, like 10 sessions, 12 sessions, I mean, approximately like in, in your experience? Okay, so and again, it depends on each person and depends on the scenario. So, for example, with the polycystic ovaries, and you know, you're not even ovulating, you're not even having a menstrual cycle at all, right? I've seen one lady came and she didn't have a period for two years, and within four seconds, she started to get a menstrual cycle. So, wow, that's awesome because without a menstrual cycle, you can't get pregnant unless you do, of course, right? And then they use drugs to stimulate. So in terms of the numbers, so research has shown that basically, if you're in the middle of an IVF cycle, there's a better, a higher take-home baby rate than you are not doing anything at all. But that requires three plus sessions. And even better if it's 12 plus sessions, right? Again, back to when are you starting? So if you're coming in the middle of an IVF, sometimes we are literally doing um, acupuncture every other day, or sometimes even every day if there's not that many eggs follicles to work with. Okay. And then do you also use Chinese herbal medicine along with the acupuncture? So what is really great is that acupuncture is part of traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. Chinese herbal medicine is part of Chinese medicine. So, and then lifestyle and exercise and Diet tearing habits inform your full body mind connections. Yeah. We can't really have one without the other. So typically with acupuncture, we do recommend people also utilize, you know, supplements, lifestyle, dietary changes, as well as Chinese medicine. And Chinese medicine, though, if you're at a fertility clinic, we have to be careful because the doctors are not going to be in cahoots with us. Right, and and they may say, oh no, we don't want to. Like we're okay with you doing acupuncture, but not necessarily so much to do with herbal medicine. But that totally depends on because I also know some physicians. So I'm in Toronto in Canada, and some people know me, and they'll say, just do and take whatever Mary tells you. <laughs> right. So it's like so you know if you're going to work with an acupuncture, then Hopefully, it's someone that can communicate with your health professional. If you're in the room, if you're on your own and trying to do it, you don't need to, um, you know, ask your doctor. You can go ahead as long as you, know, you find an acupuncturist, a TCM doctor that is proficient in the field of of Chinese medicine for fertility, because it's a specialization. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so what do you talk about in your book? Like, is it like a step-by-step -step instructions as to what people can do by themselves? Is it a self -help? What exactly is the book about? Yeah, and thank you for saying that. So I'm going to show you again. It's called Pathways to Pregnancy. And it's probably backwards too. It's personal stories and practical advice. For I see. And, and, and you know, I have to think about do I want another how-to book out there? There's a lot of how-tos in this world, right? And what I found, uh, Dr. Randy Lewis, who wrote um, The Infertility Cure, she was the first um, medical doctor who transformed herself and learned Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. And then with her personal experience and healing herself through Chinese medicine, she then studied Chinese medicine and then wrote a book called The Infertility Cure. Mm -hmm. And having done it was, it was, there was a lot of how-tos, and even for myself, I'm like, ooh, it needs a bit more than that. It's awesome, it's juicy, but I, it, it needs more in-depth story, things to help us identify and know that we're part of a bigger community. Because as I say, you know, it takes more than just a, a village to raise a child. It actually takes a village to create a child. Yeah. So, and being that, like, it, it, it's like, creating the wise women 
journal of hearing other stories, those that have been there before them who has suffered and have had a whole host of crazy stories, and yet they were able to conceive and build their family. So it's 15 stories of hope, one of which is my own. And so, yes. That's, I think that's great. That's absolutely great. We are talking about fertility issues and dealing uh, in, and talking about how acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine can help you. I know it's, it's just like an odd time of the day. You know, people are working at this time, but typically, um, you know, th this is the time later on when people start joining us and asking us questions. If somebody has a question, I see people joining, we've been talking about fertility and how acupuncture can help. Anything else you'd like to say, uh, wrap up the session? What would you, your message would be to other women? Well, one of the biggest message I always say is no matter what you are diagnosed with, there's it's it's not the truth. It's a moment in time. So I find that it's very triggering when the words infertility, failed IVF, failed or you know you, uh, geriatric a person, and it's just negative connotation, which really beats the heart and soul up. And just know that there are much more than who you are than just your diagnosis. And there's always ways to overcome and there's always hope. And, you know, I, in my stories, I also add in really practical advice that no doctors ever will tell you. Like, you know, you, people are not guided and what they don't know is that the hardest part of trying to conceive is that two week wait, that waiting of, you know, um, when you think that maybe you're pregnant and then, you know, to do that pregnancy test, that causes a lot of stress. And so there's lots of information on that and lots of information on all these other things. So you can totally reach out to me. I'm at me, Mary Wong. You can DM me with any questions you have. Uh, look okay. me up at Lock. Sure. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Mary. Um, I know people are joining right now. We are almost going to wrap up the session. The session has been, we've been talking about how acupuncture and general medicine can help with fertility. It's a very focused topic. You know, to the people who are having uh, pregnancy issues, uh, you know, are probably joining, but you are welcome to uh, send us uh, uh, feedback or questions if you have any. Uh, and you want to learn more acupuncture can help. With that, um, I'd like to. Um, wrap up this session and, and uh, yeah thank you so much Dr. Mary for being with us Thank you so much for having me and I just need to add that you're doing an amazing thing I can't believe you know spending all this time and creating all this content to help women out there because you know they deserve it we deserve it so I really want to thank you for all that you're doing in this world Absolutely, my, my, you know, I cannot be successful without all of all the experts who give their time to us and we are trying to advocate and make people aware how natural medicine can help. And we're also coming out with programs, you know, in, literally in a couple of weeks in this month, that people will be able to get, uh, you know, programs from experts such as yourself if you're interested, so that, you know, we can spread this word and make it accessible and affordable to everyone in, in the world for that matter, right? love it yes thank you and i saw that and i'm like that's exciting and yes we're actually building a, a doctor tanya wild who's a naturopathic doctor and myself we're collaborating and we've, we've created an online program for uh, postpartum women because you know we see fertility but then when they're when it comes to after birth it's like whoa no support now so like we need to support women after like at all junctures all transitions of their lives so yes. thank you yeah that's awesome yeah. yes we women need support all the way <laughs> but but that's yeah. great that's what makes us so vibrant and women are so vibrant and full of life and so much doubt not that i'm trying to downplay men here but, but you know that's the truth women are bringing the seeds of life right yes absolutely Absolutely. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart today, and we will be in touch with you soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.